Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Wonder Spotlight, where today we will be taking a look at one of the more unique wonders in the game, and one of the ones that is a little bit hard to say for my American friends, and that is Casa de Contratación. Or, you know, maybe if you're either American or English or anything other than, you know, Spanish, or I think it's Colombian where <laughs> this word is actually from, you can just call it Casa. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start looking at the various properties of CASA. So CASA is unlocked with the Cartography Technology, this does make it a Renaissance era wonder. And to get the Eureka for Cartography, all you have to do is have two harbors construct uh, constructed in your empire, which if you're going for a game in which you're going to be building CASA, you probably have two harbors made, and, and I find that in a lot of games, normally by this point you probably have two harbors down. The only exception would be if you're playing on Pangaea or something like that, where you're really just not settling coastally at all, then you probably won't have two harbors down, but nonetheless, the Eureka for cartography is very easy to get, so you should be able to count on that boost pretty, pretty consistently. As far as the building requirements for Casa are concerned, there is only one, and that's that it has to be placed adjacent to a government plaza, and uh, it also does have a production cost of 920 production, which is standard for the Renaissance era wonders. So, making it adjacent to a government plaza is very easy to satisfy, obviously the only thing you have to do in order to actually satisfy that is to put in the effort to place the government plaza. So one thing to keep in mind is that if you are going to be wanting to build CASA, you have to leave a tile that is next to your government plaza, because if you're someone like me who likes to surround my government plaza totally with districts, you're not going to be able to do that, because you're going to have to sacrifice at least one of those tiles to put down CASA, but nonetheless, very easy building requirements to satisfy. Now getting into the bonuses that CASA provide, it, it has quite a few of them, um, so there are a few that are a little bit basic, so for one it provides three great merchant points per turn, great merchant points, you know, three of them, pretty decent amount, but it's not going to be that insane, it's pretty much like, it's pretty much the effect of having an additional commercial hub in your empire with regards to great merchant points, and some of the great merchants actually are good, so that's another kind of bonus to this. You also do gain three free governor titles, which is actually a decently significant amount. Normally, you know, whenever you reach a particular civic or things like that, you get one free governor promotion, but getting three from a single build, that's that's a pretty significant amount and something that is worthwhile. You can definitely get some good governor promotions or maybe appoint some new governors out of that, and you definitely will want to, because with CASA, the big bonus from CASA is that all cities on your non-home continent with a governor receive plus 15% production, faith, and gold. So, you know, I've, I've ranted and raved about my, my affinity for percentage-based yields, so getting uh, production, faith, and gold all, all at once from this wonder, you can see where this, uh, this wonder definitely has some potential for some insane bonuses. Should be noted for those of you who don't know, uh, your non-home continent just means the like any continent that is not the one that your capital is settled on. So even if you're settled, you know, on a single island that maybe it's split up into two continents, uh, the cities that are not on the same continent as the capital will still receive this bonus if they have a governor. There is also a big area that you can use this if you are playing Dido, and I'm so sure some of you have thought of that already, because with Dido you can move your capital. Um, I believe it, it was previously an issue that you had to move your capital before finishing uh, finishing Casa, so that is one thing to keep in mind. I don't know if that was ever patched or not, I admittedly haven't tried. Uh, because that is something uh, that, you know, is a little, it's a little bit difficult to set up sometimes. So if you are playing Dido and trying to get, you know, the, the cheese of moving your capital and then building Casa to effectively get the bonus in your starting cities, then just be, oh, just be aware of the fact that you might have to move your capital before actually completing the wonder. Aside from this though, this bonus can be incredibly strong and it can really help if you're playing someone like Victoria or Spain or Dido where you're going to be setting up a lot of colonies. 15% production, faith, and gold is always just really, really nice to have. So now let's go on and give this wonder its rating. So if you're new to the series, uh, all that you need to know is that these ratings go on a 1 to 5 scale with 1 being worst and 5 being the best. So for the overall rating for Casa, I think that it deserves a 4. It has some really strong bonuses. Um, as I've mentioned before, I really love percentage-based yield bonuses because they continue to get better and better and better as you move throughout the game, and CASA is no exception to that. And you, uh, even better, you get yield bonuses to three different types of yields. Um, the one thing that is a little bit goofy is that faith, you know, faith production and gold don't necessarily tie together all that well. 
but uh, faith and gold kind of do because then you can purchase things with faith or purchase them with gold and production is always just nice to you know build things so this can be really nice for getting some of your uh, new continents or your new colonies on new continents uh, started really fast just because you'll be able to build things a little bit faster buy things in those cities and it'll all be a little bit cheaper so for that reason I think Casa deserves a four as far as the use cases are concerned, uh, I've mentioned it multiple times already, and that's really just those great yield boosts on new cities on another continent uh, to really get them going or even to keep them, you know, even better than what they normally would be once they are already built up. The other big area is with the Dido cheese, so moving your capital, then building Casa, and then getting those percentage-based bonuses in your original cities that are already really built up. As far as the difficulty for this wonder is concerned, I think that it deserves a 3. It is moderately difficult sometimes. Uh, it really depends on what other AI are in the game and how much they, I guess, feel like building the wonder. Because sometimes the AI don't really care, so they won't really bother with Casa, but sometimes they like to build it. So it really just varies. Most of the time you don't have to be too out outright and, you know, uh, like forward thinking. I don't know. That's not none of those are the right words, but you like you don't have to rush for Casa in most games, but you do have to be at least moderately cognizant of the fact that you want to build it and you should get it down in a reasonable time frame. Otherwise, it might get built before you. And as far as its consistency rating is concerned, uh, this is where things are not quite so good. I think it deserves a two. I find that in a lot of games, it's hard to really get a huge impact out of Casa. So Casa is one of those wonders that has really huge potential, but a lot of the time, you know, doesn't actually realize that potential. So in a lot of games, you're maybe not going to have that many colonies on other continents, or maybe you, you know, in some games, you're also going to get really lucky and you're going to start on a continent split, at which case Casa is insane. So it really varies game to game and uh, what your play style is going to be, what the spawn is like as to how good Casa is. So for that reason, I think it deserves the two inconsistency just because it's really not all that consistent. And before we end the video today, I've got a little bit of a sponsor spot. So this is, a, this is a story that I know a lot of you have probably heard already from me talking about it on stream or things like that. Uh, but the people over at BenQ recently sent me over a product, the BenQ uh, screen bar reading lamp. So this is a product that whenever I first, you know, heard that I was going to be getting and I was like, what the heck? Like, why is why is BenQ sending me a lamp? Um, but as I've been using it, I've actually found that it is a really nice product if you fit into the market that, you know, it's it's really good for. So I, I am a student, as some of you may know, and as a student, I can actually say that this lamp is really nice to use just because there's a lot of times where I'm up, you know, late hours into the night doing homework and having a lamp the, that's just, you know, right over my monitor. So I'm not going to be getting glare off of it. Uh, it pretty much takes up no desk space. And the most important thing to me is that you can change the color temperature on it. So whenever it's nighttime and you don't want to be staring at bright blue light, you can just turn it down nicely to the light, like the nice orange light to kind of match, uh, you know, what, what, like something like flux would do with your computer it really helps with your eyes and things like that so if you're a student i would actually highly recommend you at least taking a look at this lamp it is a little pricey but um if it's something that you know you have in your budget you're looking for a, a really nice lamp to go and you know not take up a lot of space and uh you know just make it really nice whenever you're studying at night then i could give the uh, the screen bar a solid recommendation so link to purchase it is in the description below and once again this was sponsored uh, they haven't paid me but they just gave me the lamp for free so take that as you will so anyways thank you everyone for watching i have been the saxy gamer if you enjoyed the video feel free to like if not feel free to dislike if you're looking for some more civilization 6 content feel free to subscribe thank you for watching and goodbye